What does it take to master another language? Well, think about how you mastered your native tongue. You had years of practice under the constant supervision of your parents and family. Early on, you made mistakes that everyone thought were so cute. But after a while, those cute mistakes weren't so cute anymore, but rather kind of annoying. And you had to go to school and deal with the grammar and rules of how to speak correctly. It took years of study, reading and writing to get a proper education in your native language. But that's not all. Hear me now. Every day you came home to your family, you hung out with friends, you turned on the TV, you were reinforcing those language skills through total immersion. Language acquisition involves years of both intentional study and putting that knowledge into practice by interacting with others who speak the same language. Jazz was born in the USA, but the language and sounds of jazz are not at the forefront of current popular culture anymore, like they were in the 1930s and 40s. It's kind of like a foreign language to us now. And in order to truly learn it, we must begin exposing our ears to this language on a daily basis. Now, it is possible to learn some of the rules and theory of jazz from books and other aids, but in order to speak the language, you must be in contact with others who speak it. This can be a challenge for some of you due to location, perhaps a lack of jazz opportunities. Ideally, you'd find a mentor, a teacher, and even an artist, uh, historical or otherwise, to emulate. You've got to know what you're aiming for in order to eventually get there, right? It's no surprise to me that throughout my career as a jazz educator, the students who developed the fastest were the ones who had one or two big musical influences, as well as a pivotal teacher who helped them navigate their ability. For a season, Freddie Hubbard was my overarching musical influence. I listened and appreciated many other artists, but I decided that Freddie came closest to what I wanted to be able to do on the trumpet. I would transcribe some of his solos and even some of his compositions. Through my formative years, I tried to channel Freddie's spirit in every jazz context I found myself in. Now, some of you may be balking at this notion. Perhaps you listen to many jazz artists and you might be thinking, isn't it wrong to just focus on one person? Isn't that just copying or worse, stealing? Why, yes, yes it is. And it is the exact kind of thing you did to learn English. You mimicked your parents, your siblings, and your friends every day. In jazz, by doing a deeper study on a few artists, you're able to step inside the mind of those masters, not just to play the same notes, but to learn how they think. You learn to value the aspects they value. By studying Freddie, I didn't just learn harmony lessons. I learned about trumpet technique and command, jazz articulation, developing a strong swing feel and rhythmic concept, how to play the blues, and much, much more. In fact, I began to do a lot of these things before anybody taught them to me, simply by immersing myself in his music. To be sure, I did not stay there. I moved on from placing Freddie at the center of my musical universe. I kind of figured out, like most other trumpet players, that I'd actually never be able to sound like Freddie. I mean, he was amazing, but he also spent his entire life cultivating his approach. And I have a different life, and I have different musical influences, and also I live in a different time period. But those lessons I learned during that season gave me a firm foundation which I've built upon ever since. Freddie's music will always be a part of who I am, but it doesn't define who I am anymore. The late great Clark Terry had a famous saying that put this process of jazz development into a formula. Imitate, assimilate, innovate. Imitate, assimilate, innovate. Now, Clark was one of the most original and beloved jazz trumpeters in history, and yet even he acknowledged the importance of imitation 
within the grand scheme of learning how to play this music. So, with that said, what about you? Do you have any musical heroes you wish to emulate? It's okay to pick and choose who you like to listen to. I give you permission. Go after artists you have a deep emotional connection with. Listen to them every day and start to pick apart the various reasons why they sound so great. You know, we're no longer just fans of music. We're students of music. So we have to study. This is your starting point for the imitation phase of your development. I know sometimes it can be impossible to whittle down your list, but if you only have a limited amount of time to practice, this step is crucial to making sure your practice counts. The list of artists you wish to study on a deeper level does not have to include only one person, but it shouldn't include too many. One thing I love about this art form is that there's room for every kind of style and personality. The key is to be honest and authentic with what you like and not to feel pressured to sound like someone just because others say you have to, or maybe you think others think you have to, or maybe you think that they think that you think you have, I think you get the point. After all, this music is really about sharing your own tastes, emotions, and personality with others. So in summary, Jazz is a language and should be learned the way you learn to speak, by listening, imitating, speaking, and studying. Imitate, assimilate, and innovate. This is from the great Clark Terry. Uh, we start with imitation, but then it goes to assimilation, which means figuring out why the artist sounds so good. That's where you start to do a deeper dive into the harmony and, and the chords and, and what, what their language and their ideas are about. And what about their rhythmic ideas? What about their swing feel? And what about their uh, uh, phrasing, for example? And then that moves over to innovate. And notice that when we're learning this music, we're doing all three of these at the same time, by the way. We're imitating, we're assimilating, and then we're innovating. What is innovating? Innovating is just creating. That's where you get to take what you've learned and go grab a friend or five or whatever and just play some music and 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 trade ideas and you begin the creative process. That's not something you want to wait on. That's something you learn as you go, just like uh, the, the assimilation phase. Then next, decide who you will spend the next season studying and imitating. This could include non-jazz artists, but to learn how to play the various styles within jazz, you must spend time with the masters who created it. There's got to be somebody that you love to hear in jazz. Come on, man. There's got to be one person that you just like, wow, that's that's amazing. I want to dig. I want to do a deeper dive into this person's music. Come on now. And then lastly. Study artists that you love, not based on who others think you should study. This should be about the artists that really make you feel something, that the hairs on your, on your uh, arm kind of stand up. You get goosebumps when you hear them play, right? That's who you should be focused on, and you don't need permission from anybody to go study them. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. I want to thank you for watching it. Please like, I mean, if you like the video, then like the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and share this video as well. I will see you on the next one. Peace.